Hey guys, it's Jar here and welcome back to Dream Daddy. We got some hot dads, yo. So let's turn down the music a tad. Never mind. So let's load. Eat a lot of bro broccoli. Bro Is that how you spell broccoli? Broccoli. Dad to pet every dog every day of the month of the year. Unless you're allergic to dogs, then don't. I love the music of this soundtrack. I might download it on my iPod actually. It's actually really good. You're really good. What's my dream, Daddy? What's the load? Dream, Daddy. Who's gonna be your dream daddy? So do any of you guys have a dream daddy yet? Might be in the game or in real life. So, are you excited for the cookout today? Excited to beef up my grill grilling skills. This food, I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah. This food. I'm all over those terribly store book sugar cookies that everyone brings to parties. Mm. Hell yeah. Yeah, those are pretty bad. Which means there are more for me. Hell to the year. Ooh. Don't you want to meet some people in the neighborhood? I'll probably end up standing uncomfortably in the corner with a plate of food, hoping that nobody talks to me. Honestly, me in every social situation ah. ever. Me just when I have family events. Dad, you're a beautiful work in progress. We will get that butterfly to emerge from the cocoon. I like that. You're a beautiful work in progress. The social butterfly. Well, we better get started. We better get ready then. We definitely don't want to be late. What? No. We have to be fashionably late. Who shows up to a cookout on time? You know what? We're going early just because you said that. Ha 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 ha. Also, I want that entire outfit that Amanda's wearing. I head out the door and Amanda reluctantly follows. We walk across the street to Joseph's house. We still bought veggie plate. I'm a terrible cook if it doesn't involve a grip. Nice. Is that lettuce on the grill? I guess we're not as early as we thought. Joseph's backyard is already packed with people and the smell of hot dog wafts through the air. Small children run around sprinklers and adults chat in small clusters. I set out the veggie plate next down to the other two veggie plates. Huh. Hey, there's Joseph. I wave to get his attention. The moment he sees us, he jogs, jogs uh -huh. over, arms wide open. Welcome. I'm so glad you two are here. And you brought veggies. How so <laughs> adorable. Let me introduce you to my family. Kids, come over here. This is Chris, my eldest. I don't want to be here. I'm going to go back and sleep. I have to look like a stuck-up bridge kid to hide. This is Christine Whoa. and Chrissy. They're twins. They say creepily and say nothing. Yeah, that's definitely creepy. Then, of course, there's our youngest, Krish. Wait, where's Krish? Wait, wait, where's Krish? Sorry, my voice all of a sudden. Maybe Mary put him in his crib. Oh no, it's the woman from the bar from the other night. What is she doing here? Oh, and how could I forget my lovely wife, Mary? So you're a closeted mm. gay. Good to know. Joseph pe Joseph pecks her on the cheek. She smiles. Oh, Mary, sweetheart. Mm. Did you put Chris to bed? I have to go look for him. What? You have to... Joseph takes a moment and regains his composure. I think he's an abusive wife. Uh, husband. Mary, this is our neighbor, Jay, ah. and his daughter, Amanda. 
I'd shake your hand, but I have a glass of wine I need to attend to. I love her. Nice to, uh, meet you, Mary. For the first time ever. Charmed. Well, I have to go over there now. Mary leaves. Oh god, this is so awkward. I wonder if Joseph knows. I wonder if Mary knows that Joseph knows. I wonder if Joseph knows that Mary knows that I know. Takes all of my energy not to run away from the barbecue and start afresh <laughs> and start fresh in a new city. <laughs> my wife has a wonderful sense of humor. But please, you two enjoy the barbecue. All the guys are really excited to meet you. Here, let me introduce you around. Let me introduce you to Damien. Joseph beckons a tall man in gothic attire over to the conversation. Good eve, friends. Oh. Damien, this is our neighbor, Jane. Oh, so lovely to meet you. Jimmy shakes my hand and then bows. If you're ever interested, it would bring me great pleasure to host you for a spot of afternoon tea. I'm waiting to be like, Squirtle, go! Or like, He's just sitting here and he's like, I activate my trap card. Wow, um, uh. that actually sounds really cool. Splendid. Well, I must be off. Perhaps our paths shall cross again. Damn, what a classy dude. Wow, I think I've actually met everyone else. Great. I bet you're excited to get to know everyone better. Hope you both enjoy yourselves. Ta-ta. Amanda and I mill around and try some the food spread out the table. I pick some deviled eggs. Amanda grabs a small paper plate and immediately begins piling it with baked goods. Ugh. I don't want to make friends. Ugh. Too much effort. Come on, Dad. Who are you going to party with when I go off to school? But I don't want to have to do pleasantries. I don't want to have to socialize. Dad. Ugh. I'm going to about the weather. Go. Do it, mate. A friend. But how can I possibly abandon my only child at a social function? That's bad parenting. This plate of cookies is my new dad. Bye! Honestly, same girl. Same. Amanda shoves me into the center of the yard. Well, here goes nothing. I look around the party and I'm surprised to see some familiar faces. Isn't that the barista from Coffee Spoon? Didn't I meet that guy at the bar? Didn't that guy throw a frisbee at, frisbee at my head? That mysterious goth guy? Isn't that Amanda's teacher? Hey, I know Craig. <laughs> it's like, hey, I know this guy, I know this guy, I know this guy. Hey, Craig. But, wait a sec. All these people live in our cul-de-sac? That can't be right. I must, I better investigate. Well, we gotta talk to Craig. Because he is the best. And that's like the best combo. Matt, Hugo, and Craig. Best combo. And then after, it would be... I don't know. Uh, I don't like Robert or Brian or Joseph and Damien. I only really like these three. So what I might do is that, then Burger Time, then Damien and Brian, because mm. Brian's the one I like the least. So let's talk to Matt, Hugo, and Craig. <sighs> some some good looking boys here. Matt and Hugo seem to be embroidered in. Intense discussion. Craig looks on, smiles politely. I will come and say hello. Oh, I've got to remember their voices. <clears throat> I miss it, there you go. Well, I don't think it's fair to try and compare two art movements like this. Periods in art only exist because they are unique byproducts of the social and political climate of the time and place. Try to make, try to take something like, say, the Rocco period and compare it to the postmodernism in America. You completely disregard the context in which the work of art is created. Matt and Hugo seem so busy to talk that they don't even notice me. Craig leaves in. Dude, I have no idea what's happening. River is like, what? Humans everywhere. Talk to Craig. I turn my attention to Craig, who seemed a little more attentive to my existence. Oh. How's resistance training going the other day? Craig. Little River is a great cheerleader, aren't you, teeny bro? <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, like, grabs a little arm and like, dee -dee -dee -dee. Craig grabs River's arms and waves her around. Woo! You can do it, Dad. I'm so proud of you. I'm sorry for pooping on you. <laughs> That's so cute. Hmm. 
Hmm. She must be a handful at that age. Hey. Oh, they always are. But it's so worth it. Craig grabs oh. Rufus' arms again and waves him around. Woo! I'm sorry for throwing up on you, Dad. How are you settling in? Rufus on the new place is perfect. I never get too comfortable. I'm almost done. There's still a few odds and ends to take care of before I can really call myself settled. But I think we can upgrade the situation to livable. We did livable throughout our entire entirety of college. Yeah, my goal was for Amanda to live the sort of life that didn't involve eating spoonfuls or ranch dressing as a palate cleanser between different types of pizza. She still does though. Hey, she takes after her dad. Joe, how are you liking the neighborhood? It's pretty nice. Everyone's been super friendly, which is kind of weird, but everyone's really nice, which is cool. Seems like your daughter is fitting, is fitting just fine. Matt points across the yard to where Amanda, Daisy, and another young girl are playing. They're all seen cross in the grass, picking weeds and weaving them into little flower crowns. It's very adorable. The girl I don't know recognized jogs over to us. What is it, sweetheart? It's this flower crown. Hey. I thought you'd look cute in it. Mm -hmm. Well, there's only one way to find out. Hey. Matt takes a flower crown and places it on top of his head. It's adorable! Am I cool now? The girl says to him, thinking it over. Mm, no. But you're slightly less uncool than you were before you put it on. <laughs> hey, Jay, this is my daughter. Hello! Ooh, I'm. I'm. Carmen. Carmenista. I'm Carmenista. Amanda comes over with Daisy in tow. Dad, look, I'm making friends. Are you? Are you making friends? You better be making friends. Yes, actually, Amanda. You remember the cool barista from the coffee shop? And my old college friend and, uh. Huh? Your teacher? Oh. Hi, Mr. Vega. I didn't realize ah. you were. We were neighbors. Yep. You still gonna. Get me that overdue term paper. Haha, <laughs> great seeing you, bye! Mana finger goes her way out of the conversation like a jam. She'll learn the finger gun moves from me. Hmm? Pretty proud. She's definitely a charmer. Speaking of which, what? where did my son go? What? Hugo looks around the party, he must finally smile because his eyes go wide. Ernest! Ernest Hemingway hmm. Vega, are you smoking? Ernest is holding a lit cigarette. No. I see Ernest across the way. He casually takes a long drag of his mm. cigarette and then flicks it into the gutter. Unbelievable. Excuse me. Hugo marches over to Ernest and I turn my attention to Matt and Craig. Hey. Kids, right? Man, I do not envy Hugo. The last barbecue we had, Ernest tried to shove a sparkler down Joseph's pants. Huh. Literally burnt down half the yard. And a barbecue. Mm. <laughs> And the barbecue before that, he actually broke down half the yard. Pretty sick, though. And then it spread to my lawn. I uh. broke down half my yard, too. Oh, you're like a 16, one, 13 to 16 year old. How cute. Hugo walks right over to us, hmm. partially dragging Ernest behind him. Hello, everybody. Sorry about that. Jay, this is my son, Ernest. Hello. Ernest looks away, sulking. His hands shoved deep in his pockets. Mmm. Hugo nudges him impatiently. Hey. So I feel like he's going through puberty. Nice to meet you, Ernest. What grade are you in? Does it oh. uh? Ernest. Okay, okay, I'm in eighth grade. God, are you happy now? I'm sure you were just dying to know. Uh yeah. Mm. Good for you. So yeah, he's thirteen. We call it year eight. Can I go now? I'm tired of talking to old dudes who blame my generation for the failing economy. Ouch. Hmm. Too true, though. Ernest? Oh, yeah, because I'm totally embarrassing you. Ernest puts earbuds in and storms off, stands in the corner. Well, that was certainly something. It seems nice. Ah. Hugo puts his head in his hands and sighs. I'm so sorry. He's been having a rough time. As much as I want to be the cool dad, I have to be the authority dad, and he clearly resents me for it. I mean, I think as a dad and a teacher, that's about as 
authority as you can get, my dude. Honestly, are any of us cool dads? Is it even possible to be a cool dad? What? I'm the coolest dad ever. I'm as cool as a cool. I'm as cool as a cucumber. <laughs> See that right there? You oh. can't say that. My kids think I'm cool. Right, but how long, Craig? How long do we get to be oh. the cool dad? I um don't know. I think we just have to accept the fact that as dads, we become the machines we once raged against and accept our fate to unironically wear socks with sandals. Your kids may think you're cool now, but the moment they hit puberty, you're doomed. Amanda's 18, 18 and she still thinks I'm cool. Ayla across the yard to my daughter. Amanda, I'm cool, right? Love me? Amanda just laughs. She keeps laughing. Um. I see your point. As much as we all want it, I don't think it is important to be the cool dads as it is to be a good dad. We can't be best friends with our kids. It just doesn't work. I mean, look at me and Ernest. Oh. Our job as parents is to make sure that our kids turn out okay and I'm doing a shit job. Yeah, you're right. But it'd be nice to have it both ways every once in a while. And these guys talk about this makes me think of my relationship with Amanda. We get along so well, but... There might come a time when it won't be like this. Is college ah. when that happens? Don't let it eat up your time, Jay. Go and meet some of the other people around the neighborhood. Oh. Burger time, yo. Without further ado, let's work some magic. Joseph closes his eyes, takes a deep breath, and gets to work. With the greatest of ease, he sets patties on the grill, flourishing as he flips spatulas in the air. It's hmm. easy some of the best grill work I've ever seen. You think you guys think this is my first time in front of the grill? I am a straight guy, I promise. He's working fast now, effortlessly tossing cheese onto patties and perfectly grilling onions on the side. One after another, dads take notice and the crowd around Joseph to admire his masterful technique. You probably didn't know this, Jay, but Joseph knows around yeah. known around here for his grillmanship, bro. <laughs> He's ungrillable. Hey. He's not grillable. I tried to get on... Oh, that was you. Hey! I tried to get on his level, hey. but I just can't catch him. Let us keep studying. He has a <laughs> rare quality about him. Mustard, we keep talking about this. We can't just appreciate the artist. I've... I've never seen him oh. make a mistake. Okay, this is getting... We need to stop. It's getting too cheesy. Please stop! All the children are party building the glorious display of plants. Alright, guys. The food is ready. Please form an orderly barbecue. Monday groans, we grab our food and hang out. Join perfectly cooked cheeseburgers. Man, it's so wide how all of us dads live in the same cul-de-sac. Kind of nice, isn't it? Feels like there's a real community here. It totally helps when you're just a single dad trying to raise a kid. We're happy to help you here, man. Oh. I think you're gonna like this neighborhood a lot. Plus, Amanda seems to be getting along with all the kids. If she decides to get into babysitting okay. game, she'll make a real killing. Hey, why don't you add us all on dad book? Hmm. Dad book? Is that like Facebook, but for dads? Yeah, it's a great social network for dads to keep in touch with each other. We're all on it, and even if you need to reach out to anyone, it's the simplest way to do it. Sorry, I'm just an old-fashioned dad. Social media goes huh. over my head sometimes. You know, I try the Twitbot, and you know, the snapper chop and you know, the Insta, the in, what's it called? What's the one called? The Insta dollar? I can't figure it out. Don't worry, pops. I'll help you figure it out. The rest of the barbecue goes smoothly. We'll trade stories and drink beer as our kids play on the lawn. Amanda breaks up a fight between Carmen Esther and those weird twins. I think they want her soul. Welcome to the neighborhood. Amanda and I walk back to our place as the sun sets over the neighborhood. Pretty fun party, don't you think? I mean, I got a bag on me. I feel like it was a net. I was a networking event. I wish you could have played. Yeah. I'm gonna get Lincoln notification mm. out of this, just so you know. You don't think it's nice that people want to connect with you, want to hang out with you, want to be friends with you, maybe more? Not when the affection jams mm. up my inbox, metaphorically speaking. 
Well, hey, at least you met some other cool dads. You should hit them up on Dadble. Maybe I will, if I ever figure out how social media works. I have a good feeling about this place. Something tells me you... Something's gonna happen. Me too. Huh? Hmm. Amanda and I arrive home with the remnants of our veggie platter. Hmm. Seems like nobody was really into cauliflower. <laughs> Any plans for this evening? Actually, yeah. I'm going out with some friends. Oh? Mm -hmm. Friends? Who are their names? Address, phone number. Is their parents okay with it? Is that okay? Of course. Just keep uh -huh. me posted and be home before midnight. You got it, pups. And be careful. Uh -huh. I will. Make good choices. Of course. And call me if you need anything. Dad, you're not going to do this when you're waiting silently for me to come home in the living room with all the lights off, are you? What? No, mm -hmm. I've never done that. I never will do that. Okay, do you have plans for tonight? I, uh... My plans were kind of to eat ice cream and watch TV with Amanda, but I find something to do. I'm gonna... set up dad talk? Work on some stuff, throw a party, see how long I can sleep for. Work on some stuff. You know, dad stuff. I mean, just relaxing tonight. Have fun, okay? Great, see you later. I watch Amanda drive off into the night. I really hope she does have fun. I plop down in front of the TV and turn on some wine and dine mastermind with celebrity chef Gavin Chapman. Looks like Gavin's making a roast rack of lamb with rosemary mashed potato. Rosemary mashed potato. I'd love to be able to cook like that. Although I think if I was actually good at cooking, I'd use my powers for evil. Just like making bait Alaska all day instead of any food with raw nutrition or substance. Man. Gavin Chapman just caught the thing on fire, but he meant to do it. What a professional. At least track a time as I'm blazing through several episodes of Wine and Dine Mastermind. And... Also, one of the episodes of some cooking show called Meat Hell. So, like, Hell's Kitchen. I'm not even sure what that one was about. It was a lot of yelling. Hell's Kitchen. I glance at my watch. Man, it's almost midnight. I should check in with Amanda. I send a text. Hey, kiddo, you good? I wander in the kitchen as I wait for a reply. Amanda's phone is almost always in her hand. I'm sure she'll respond soon, unless she's driving home. In which case, I hope she doesn't respond, so because I'm definitely taught her better than to text and drive. I reach into the freezer and grab an ice cream sandwich. It's a little late for this, but I think I earned it after a long day of walking outside and socializing. I check my watch, watch again, and then my phone. Nothing yet. Hmm. Okay, now I'm some worry. Do I call her? Do I call the cops? No, no, no. It's too soon for that. I'll just send her a general reminder text. What's up? Half an hour passes, now I'm really worried. The episode of Galvin Chapman's Meet Hell are not only assuring my anxiety, but possibly exaggerating it with all the yelling, so I keep pacing around the house waiting for her to come back. Why didn't I find out where, was, where she was going, who she's with? Why I don't know any of her friends' phone numbers? Why I don't even know any of her friends' full names or first names? Who has ever been? I decided to send her another text. Amanda, please text me and let me know you're okay. I can't help but think of the awful thing that could have happened to her. Oh, thank God, it's her. Amanda opens the door and shuffles in. Finally, finally, she's home. I'm glad she's okay. What's up? Ugh. Sweetie, thank goodness you're safe. Yep. But now I know she's okay, I'm really mad. Why didn't you answer any of my texts? Hmm. Amanda pulls her phone out of her pocket. Oh, oops. I guess I didn't see those. She starts to walk to her room. Hmm. Amanda Ann. Same middle name. Whoa. We're pulling out the middle name now? Amanda, you came home at half an hour, an hour and a half after your curfew. You didn't respond to any of my texts. You hmm. really freaked me out. I was about to call the cops. Dad, you're seriously overreacting. You're not going to be like this when I go off to school, are you? I don't like attitude. I have the right to be concerned. I was scared. I have the right to be concerned. You're my only daughter. Well, I can't give you a play-by-play -play of everything I do all the time. I'm 18. You shouldn't even be giving me a curfew in the first place. I sit down on the couch and put my head in my hands. I feel very tired off all of a sudden. You just really scared me. Please don't do that again. All right. I'm going to bed now. Oh, so this is Amanda's room, maybe? Amanda goes to the door and I head to mine. Oh, no, this is my room. Jeez. As I'm falling asleep, one thing she said keeps echoing my mind. You're not going to be like this when I go off to school, are you? I definitely didn't sleep, sleep well last night. I brewed some strong coffee and made some scrambled eggs for Amanda as a peace offering. She eventually wanders into the kitchen. Hey. I thought about what you said last night. I should have texted you. I said I was going to and I didn't. I honestly just didn't even think about it. I'm really sorry. Pops, I won't do it again. Well... 
I trust you make good decisions. I'm sorry for freaking out on you. Good. Not good. I'm sorry for freaking out on you and I trust you make good decisions. I also thought about and I'll try to give you some space from here on out. I gotta trust you can take care of yourself. Team sarcasm. Team sarcasm for the win. Team cut. Team sarcasm. Woo. Money gives me a hug. Want some eggs? You know it. Sprinkle some cheese on them. Already did. Bless you, child. I'm your father, don't call me child. Mana scoffs down the eggs and time takes me to wash the pan. Alright, I'm off to school. Smell you later. Wait. Hmm. One more thing before you go. What? Ugh. What's dad book? It's a social media platform. Hmm? Wait. What? What's a social media platform? Dad, I have to go to school. Come on, Amanda. I'm an old man. I can't put together a dad book profile on my own. Right. I hope you sound interesting on the internet. Amanda spends the next couple of minutes setting up my profile on dad book. Which, as it turns out, where Ugh. dads can get together and talk about fatherhood. Alright, Pops. We're gonna fill out your profile. Let's get some likes and dislikes. Filling out some dad book. On a Friday night, you're most likely to. Polish and sort my coin collection, Netflix, and Grill Baby. Fall asleep watching the History Channel. Torment my kids with dad ponds. Sink into a blissful oblivion. Sing. Um, probably this one. Because that's more me between history and this one. I'm gonna see this one. If you had one thing to take with you on a desert island, what would it be? My trusty grill, the lost shaker of salt, castaway DVD for instructional purposes, a boat, obviously. Don't need anything. My survival students have trained me for this day. Uh, a boat. What are your turn ons? Strong dad arms, tennis shoes with long white socks, a well manicured lawn, street smarts, top to you, comfortable with crying. Ooh. Probably street smarts. If I had to pick out these, it'd be street smarts and comfortable with crying. But I think at the same time, like in real life, my turn ons is like just sweet, kind, passionate about whatever they love and just listening. And just being themselves. I'm gonna just say like, comfortable with crying. What did you want to be when you grew up? When I was younger, I wanted to be someone on like the, um, CSI team or Bones team. I also wanted to be a primary school teacher. Um, technical writer for manuals and instructions, a salty boat captain, pro skater, who's an astronaut, a good father, the president of space. A good father. What's your favourite movie genre? My favourite movie genre, personally, is sci-fi or like fantasy. War documentaries, Sean Connery's entire film, anything on the laser disc, romantic comedies, don't like. Whatever will make you cry. Old comedies that haven't aged well. Probably old comedies. What's your ideal date? My ideal date is just being with the person and maybe having dinner out, stargazing. It just depends on the night. Napping together, doing it in a thousand puzzle pieces together, eating a healthy dinner at 4pm, maybe. Trying to get geocache but get hopelessly lost, arson, being emotionally vulnerable. That would not be first aid. That's just like a normal thing you do. Probably that, I guess. What do you never leave home without? I personally never leave the house without my rings. As well as I never leave the house without a water bottle. A sensible cardigan. My sick bait, bro. No. A book of word jumbles and a pen. A cool knife. My crippling low self-esteem. I frequently forget my phone, keys, and wallets at home sometimes. I spend a lot of time thinking about. I just constantly think about like what I need to do. Um, but if I was a parent, probably just how proud my child is. Because I am constantly thinking about how proud I am of my friends and how much I've grown. So, conspiracy theories, I'm not Shane Dawson. How proud I am of my child, probably. Potential end of the world, if I'm ever be able to love myself as much as I love my grill. When I can get the next cup of coffee, or more. Yeah, how proud I am of my child. Profile complete. See, that wasn't so bad. Yeah, that was actually kind of fun. I could only spend all day in here just looking at other people's profiles. You should message one of them. Or more than one of them. All of these dads seem pretty interesting. Okay. Promise I'll make some friends. Manda gives me a hug. Go get him, Dad. <laughs> Welcome. You got check. dads. That was creepy. Oh, that's cool. So, like... 
So these are all the dads. So let's do a quick read of all of them, and then in the next episode, we will pick someone to message. Craig Khan, dad of three, business entrepreneur and fitness enthusiast. Juggling work, family, and fitness is a tough gig, but someone's going to do it. On a Friday night, you're most likely to get one last good cargo session in. If you had to take one thing on desired island to be a box of energy bars, smart. What are your turn-ons? A sub six mile. That's a bit weird. What do you want to do when you grow up? Be a Pong World Champion. Nice. What are your favorite movie genre? Body cop movies forever. Like. What's your ideal day? Scaling a huge dangerous mountain for fun. Yeah, I can do that. What do you ever never leave the home without? An extra two of energy gel. Don't know what energy gel is. I spent a lot of time thinking about a mile. My mile time used to be so good. What happened? Have I peaked? So your insecurities. Same. Matt Stella. Avid music enthusiast, passionate coffee drinker. You can find me most days selling bean juice over at the coffee spoon or hanging out at the park with my amazing daughter. Hit me up about 80s non-wave music. On a Friday night, you're most likely to find me Perfecting my cold brew setup, one drip at a time, babe. If you had one thing to take a desert island, it'd be fine tunes to pass the days away. What do you turn on? Multi instrumentalism to play multiple instruments. All right. What do you want to be when you grew up? A barista, weirdly. What's your favorite movies? Shit with subtitles. Okay, I'm down with that. What's your ideal date? Going to an animal shelter and seriously considering adopting a cat. Oh. Would you never leave the home without my headphones? Both. In ears and over ears, just in case. That is true. I don't like leaving the house without headphones. Actually, my backpack, just in general. I spent a lot of time thinking about where did writing commas into song titles come from and where did it go? Did we just all agree it's a bad idea? So, so far, Craig and Matt are like my top two. Let's read about Brian. Hey, I'm Brian. I spend most of my days ha hanging out with my awesome daughter, thinking up new ways to grill things. If you like fishing, then we'll get along. On Friday night, you are most likely to see just how slowly I can cook a piece of brisket. If I had to take one thing and design it, would be a fishing pole. What are your turn-ons? A keen understanding of steak cuts. What do you want to be when you grow up? Fireman. What's your favorite genre? Romantic comedies. What's your ideal date? Deck building. It's boring. What do you never leave the home without? My portable fishing pole. What? How? What about... I spend a lot of my time thinking about how my daughter's smarter than I am. What is she, bro? When the internet gains sentences and decides to destroy all of us, you'll know it uses this information against us, right? Robert Small. Okay. On a Friday night, you're most likely to make a deal in an alleyway. Have a go badly. Who's the cop? What's it? Gianna Cummo? I don't know. If you had one to take to design an island, be a gun. What are your turn ons? Don't talk to me. What do you want to be when you grow up? A griffer. What's your favorite movie genre? Italian neo realism. What's your ideal date? Grave robbery. What? Who are you? Would you never leave the home without at least four nights? What the hell? You spend a lot of your time thinking about you ever you ever really look into rabbit animal eyes. So just creepy. Damien Blood March. How do you do? I have finally decided to join this informational super highway. Not entirely sure how this works, but I will try my best to understand. I love long strolls through graveyards and spending time with my son. I if you would ever like to chat about the latest in Victorian fashion, the interview of our own device or black cats, please send me a letter. On Friday night, you're most likely to listen to true crime podcasts while I taxidermy my newest, my newest specimen. To Zed Island, you take a coffin. Your turn on is pronouncing bosom, or bosom correctly. What did you want to be when you grew up? A bat? What are, what are these people? Fairy genre is foreign art house horror. Your ideal date, it's night. We are at an initial dark wave club in Berlin. The music jumps to the beat of our hearts. Actually, the ideal date actually sounds pretty good. What do you never leave the house, house without? Not so down cross. Spend a lot of my time thinking about. Okay. Hugo, give me something good here. Middle school teacher, high school teacher. Writer of slurdy articles of the 18th century literature for various esteemed publications. If you're here to tell me that my son put a chemist. A cherry bomb in your trash. I know, and I'm sorry. On a Friday night, you're most likely to brew some strong tea and paint my and paint my miniatures. You have to take one thing on the desert island, be a, a remembrance of things past by 
Marcel. Well, Tony says muscle, so you like strong boys. You want to be a movie star when you grow up. My favourite genre is documentaries of art history. Your ideal day is to each of us read a different book on opposite sides of the couch, comfortably silent. That's that's a nice day. What do you never leave the house without? Actually, my glasses. Actually, I forgot them at home a lot. I spend a lot of my time thinking about I worry that people who are against e-readers are more in love with the idea of books than actually reading them. So, so far, Craig, Matt, and Hugo are the only sane ones so far that are alive. Joseph Christian. Vote Maple Bay's number one youth minister for five years running. Living in my hometown with my beautiful wife and our four amazing kids. If I'm not in church, you can catch me out in the open water, settling sails on the sea adventure. Loving guitar and crushing my kids in Candyland. Same. On a Friday night, you're most likely to lead the community in a fun mixture. You couldn't leave the... You c one thing to take on dessert island would be my sixth string. Your turn on is your loving wife. Why are you on here? You want to be a ship captain when you grow up. Your favorite genre of movies is feel-good movies. Your ideal date is a lovely night in the town with your wife. You never leave the house without a good book. And you spend a lot of time thinking about how I can be a better man and husband and father. Okay, so Craig, Matt, and Hugo are the ones that actually just sound the best. So with that, I'm going to leave this episode here. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if you liked it, let me know in the comments below and tell me, out of all those descriptions of the dads I just read, who would you actually pick to be your dream daddy? Anyway, Jurassic guys in the next video. Sorry, I'm out. And let's bring it in for a very scuzzed hug. Bye-bye. See ya. These dads are so weird.